Brothers and sisters in Islam, an Imam Muslim reported in his book on the authority of Abu Malik al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said كل الناس يغدو فبائع النفس فمعتقها أو موبقها The similitude the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave in the hadith is a very crucial one. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen, may Allah have mercy on him, said, He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam resembled people to slaves and the effort to free themselves as a trade because the Prophet ﷺ said all people go out and they sell themselves he either ransoms himself or destroys it. So we're all slaves and we're trying to ransom ourselves. <laughs> Shaykh Abu Shaq al Hawaini, may Allah Azza wa Jal protect him, preserve him, and grant him fast cure, said the Prophet. Resembled this life as a market, and we are the commodity. See, every merchant, every businessman go out to sell their products, and the outcome is either they make a profit or incur. A loss and so does the believer every day we go out to sell but in our situation the product the commodity we're selling is our own selves we either sell it to Allah Azza wa Jal and ransom ourselves from his wrath and punishment or sell it to the devil and destroy ourselves see no one likes to lose and every merchant strives hard and exerts all efforts and uses all means and tricks and tools to gain more and more But the fact of life is that not everybody makes a profit. People differ in the way they conduct their business and trade. Some are smart businessmen who know how to deal, who plan for it, who set a plan, have milestones, assess their process, have a set goal, they're focused, they're within scope. Their target is to achieve that goal. And others just go and act haphazardly and end up losing everything. A believer goes out and also conducts a trade. And his currency are his daily deeds. So he either performs good deeds and thus pleases Allah and ransoms himself, frees himself from the fire of hell. 
or performs evil deeds, sinning, and by doing so he sells himself to the devil and destroys himself. And both parties, both types, at a given point, will see the consequence of their trade. They will see the result of their business. As Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal insanu, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadihan famulaqi. O mankind, indeed, you are laboring, you are exerting effort, you are striving towards your Lord with great exertion, and indeed, you will see it or meet it. Famulaqih, the pronoun ha. As the scholars said, can refer to one of the two, either the deeds or to Allah. So you will either it either refers to the deeds, meaning you will see the result of your deeds, or it's referring to Allah, which means that you will meet Allah. And in both cases, and both cases and meanings are correct and proven in different verses and prophetic narrations in the Sunnah. The end of both cases is that you will be held accountable and you will see the end result of your trade, whether it is a loss or a gain. You see, when one sets out on a journey, knowing that his path to his destination, to his goal, is filled with danger. He would utilize all means to protect himself, to ensure that he reaches his final destination safe and sound. We all want to go to Jannah, don't we? We all say that we want to enter Jannah, don't we? But the path to Jannah is filled with risks and dangers. So we must take all means of protection against these risks, this worldly life and its pleasures. The plots of shaitan, our evil inner selves, all of these are dangers, all of these are risks that can jeopardize, that can prevent us, can be an obstacle preventing us from reaching our destination and achieving our goal. The way to protect ourselves is to be alert of these dangers and heedful of our objective all the time. See, such people who are alert and heedful are those whom Allah Azza wa protects from the pleasures of dunya, from indulging from sinking in this worldly life and its pleasures, from giving in to it. Winners are those who are focused. They have a, an objective. Their bodies are in this worldly life but their hearts and their eyes are focused to the hereafter. They strive by performing good deeds. 
They strive to achieve that goal and utilize the means of success. The means of success are performing the good deeds. Number two, making sure that these good deeds are an accepted type of deed. And the only way for a deed to be accepted is that it has to fulfill two things. Sincerity for Allah Azza wa Jal. It has to be sincere purely for Allah. And it has to be correct. Meaning it has to coincide with the action, with the performance of the Prophet Sallallahu with the Sunnah of Muhammad Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. See, not every deed claimed to be for the sake of Allah is accepted. It has to coincide with the Sunnah. For example, yesterday was the 12th of Rabi al Awwal, which is a day that some people celebrate the birthday of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived 23 years in his prophethood, never celebrated his birthday once. Abu Bakr, Umar. Uthman, Ali, Muawiyah, we're talking about decades, rather centuries. Not a single time the Prophet's birthday was celebrated. It started being celebrated in the year 322 after Hijra. I want to know what happened to 322 years of not celebrating that. These people never loved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the later ones claim love more than them. Again, not every deed claimed to be for Allah will be accepted. It has to coincide with the practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions. Number three, so the first one is performance of deeds. Number two, it has to be an accepted deed, sincere and coincides with the sunnah. And number three is that we must strive to preserve the deed. You might be successful, enabled by Allah Azza wa to perform a good deed. But then after you perform it, you start bragging about it and lose your reward. Oh, Masha, I've done this and that. Uh, I, Masha, I'm good in, in this. Or someone giving someone a, a sadaqah. Oh, I gave you a hundred dollars last, last, you remember? And keeps reminding him. And this is a sin. And people are two types, the winners, which we just covered or spoke about, and the losers. This type of people are the heedless ones. The first ones were heedful of the akhirah. These are heedless. This type remains asleep until they die. They only wake up at the moment of death. When heedfulness is of no use or benefit. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, Hatta idha jaa ahadahum al-mawt Qala rabbi rujiun La'alli until the time when time when death comes to one of them He will say, Oh my Lord, bring me back. Give me another chance. 
Bring me back. Perhaps I can do righteousness in that which I left behind, in that which I neglected. But the answer comes, no! Kalla! Innaha kalima! This is nothing but a word. This is nothing but a claim. It's a word he's saying. Had it been true, it would have been materialized, proven during his life. And then on the day of judgment, when people rise to be held accountable, he will be told, لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا You were heedless about this matter. That's why Ibn al-Qayyim, speaking about this, said when one reflects about, upon this matter, discovers that the majority of people have forgotten themselves and thus sold themselves with a loss. and destroyed themselves. And that the majority of them will only discover, they will remain heedless and only discover so at the time of death and when they are raised to be held accountable. Most people go through life deceived with this life. Living in an illusion. These losers, these heedless people prefer to enjoy and exhaust their pleasures and enjoy them in their worldly lives. And then discover so too late when recognizing the mistake is of no avail. This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned his family and tribe. <coughs> Al-Imam al-Bukhari reported on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that when Allah azza wa jal revealed وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Warn your closest kinship. He went out sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and started addressing his tribe his uncles, until he addressed the dearest of his kinship, Fatima radiallahu anha. He said, O oh, Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, ransom yourself from Allah. Free yourself from Allah, meaning from the wrath of Allah, for I cannot save you. I have no power of saving you. This is regarding Fatima to Zahra, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, the daughter of the final and best and dearest messenger to Allah. He has no power to save her. My question is to us. What are we expecting? Who is there going to be to protect us if we are not striving hard, if we do not exert effort enough in this worldly life to become deserving of salvation and the pleasure of Allah? We ask Allah's protection. Astaghfirullah wa atubu. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي المتقين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الصادق الأمين وبعد الإمام أحمد in his Musnad, 
reported on the authority of Abu Huraira. And Shaykh Al Arna'ut, may Allah have mercy on him, classified it as Hassan, sound. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ma min kharijin. Never does a person leave, meaning his house, except that there will be two banners waiting for him outside. One is in the hand of an angel, and one is in the hand of a devil. So whoever goes out and conducts according to the pleasure of Allah, uh, the Almighty, will be followed by the angel and will remain under his banner until he returns home. And whoever behaves with the displeasure of Allah Azza wa Jal will be followed by the devil and he will remain under his banner until he returns home. So the choice is ours when we leave under whose banner we want to place ourselves. The one who acts righteously in accordance to what Allah wants will free himself from the punishment of Allah and will fulfill servitude, true servitude to Allah. What is true servitude to Allah? How do I become a true slave to my Creator? I'll give an example. When one wants to walk a distance from one part to another, from one place to another, he has to walk. So the first thing he will do is raise a foot and places it down, and then raise the second one and places it down. A true slave will do the following. Will say to himself, I am going to that destination. Is that allowed to start with for me to go to that destination? If so, then let me proceed. Now, I want to proceed, so I have to walk. Which one of the two feet do I raise first? Do I raise my right foot or my left foot? Okay, then I am told to raise the right foot. Now, where should I put my foot? down because putting it here can be haram while putting it here is permissible he is always mindful of what his creator wants from him and what pleases his creator he does not act according to his own convictions and pleasure that's a real slave to, his, to the Creator. That's a person who fulfills true and sincere servitude to Allah. Unlike many people, it's, become a, it's becoming a trend. Well, actually, it has been. Some people, whenever you talk to them, I'm free to do whatever I want, man. That's my personal freedom. That's my personal preference. So... Just mind yourself, I am free. No. The one who says I am free to do and act as I wish has actually stripped himself from, from servitude to Allah. This is rebellion against servitude. Saying I am free to do as I wish and desire means I am uncontrollable. I am unrestrained. No limits to me but me. No limits to me but my wishes and desires. And that's not servitude to Allah. The ones who fulfill this servitude are the actual free ones. Those who live their lives 
slaves to Allah, they enslave to them, themselves to the Creator, live with free minds, with free wills, with free souls. They freed themselves from becoming slaves to their desires and to the devil. And this is true freedom. True freedom lies in subjecting and subduing yourself to the commands of Allah. It is not by setting yourself free and allowing yourself to act as you want. You go and tell one of the sisters or one of the brothers about his wife or sister or daughter or what have you. Hijab. No, that's a personal choice. What do you mean it's a personal choice? Where is Allah in the equation? Where is, where is Allah in your life? Where are the commands of Allah? What weight do they have in your life? If the command of Allah is going to be rejected when I simply don't like to do so, then I'm not a slave. And I should never claim to be a slave if I continue or so long as that I continue to act this way. Brothers and sisters, when we know how hard shaitan strives to lure us away from guidance, and since we know that we eventually will land in a small, tight hole underground, we ought to think a lot before we do something or attempt to do something that displeases Allah. We need to work hard to make this small room small space as spacey as we can we need to illuminate it by the virtue of our deeds loneliness in the grave is very very tough sorrow in the grave is very bitter except for those whom Allah blesses and comforts them by the virtue of their deeds as the Prophet ﷺ told us in this long hadith describing the events of death and what happens after death. In that narration, a man who is nice looking and nice smelling would approach with a smile, the pious person in the, slave, in the grave, and he will tell him, I am your good deeds. And at that moment, that pious slave would wish that the hour would come so he could enter Jannah. Contrary to those who acted wickedly and evilly in this life, they will see otherwise and they will suffer tightness, sorrow and punishment proportional to their sins. We ask Allah to protect us and to enable us to be true slaves to Him and make us always heedful of the hereafter. Make us focused on our objective of pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal and protecting us and protect us from the misguidance of the devil. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ahdina. Wahdibina. Waj'alna hudatan muhtadeen.